evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about graphing gravitational fields because there's a slight nuance to this. Okay, You need to be aware of these um, gravitational graphs and what we can do with them. So, the first thing I want to address is the idea of mass. Now the thing is, when we're doing a lot of calculations, we're assuming we're acting from the centre of the mass. Okay, when we do gravitational field strength here, the formula G equals um, GM over R squared, we are assuming that we're taking control over the whole Earth's mass. Now the problem is, is this R is from the centre. So after the R, which is um, at the centre, basically at the, uh, from the centre of the mass, we are, that's the distance we are calculating. But the problem is, is until the surface of the planet or the Earth or the Sun or whatever you're using, the, the mass is actually not taking control. So this rule, this idea that G is proportional to 1 over R squared is only apt after you get to the surface of the atmosphere, so the surface of the um, Earth itself. So what I've got here is this is R, and this is representing the surface of your object. And I know that after, we, because we're taking consideration of the whole mass, and this is what this formula is here, we're assuming that G and M are constant. And they're only constant after we've left the surface of the atom, atom or the particle, whatever. I can only say that this is true... after not wrong R, we've got to the surface of the object prior to this as you're moving through the the uh, the, the atom or the planet or whatever itself the mass is steadily changing which means that technically we actually look at it it does this this idea that it's linear up until the surface here so it reaches a peak so it reaches a peak at the surface of the planet or the star or whatever and then afterwards we have this rule that g is proportional to 1 over r squared i do apologize that should be a much deeper curve than it is there we go okay so this is one of the important things that you must take into consideration, that up until we reach the surface of the object, the mass is increasing. This is not constant, so this rule does not work. Only after we've reached the surface of the actual particle, atom, star, planet, whatever, is this true. Okay, so this graph is a really important graph that you need to take into consideration. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to actually take this graph and I want to sort of flip it on its head a little bit. And I want to look specifically at this 1 over r squared bit, okay? So I'm only just going to look here. So here's my graph. I'm going to start this here at the surface of the object. This is g, this is my distance r. And I've got my g is proportional to 1 over r squared. Now, important features about graphs are the area, okay, and the, so the area itself and the gradient. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that. We're actually going to look at the area. So if I assume this was just a triangle, I would end up with an area of a half g times by r. We just assume that's a triangle. It's a very simplification. When you calculate the area under a curve, you would actually take into consideration what's going on. I'm just using this for the sake of um, looking at the formula. So g times r, what I have here, g, field strength, the base form of the field strength is force over mass. So we replace this g with force over mass. What I've 
ended up with is this idea that force times by the distance between the objects divided by the mass is the area. Now, force times any distance is also known as work done. So, that is there. So, what I've got here is I've got a half times by work done over mass. That is potential. There. Which means that the area under the graph here for this graph of G versus R, gravitational field strength versus R, the area equals the potential, or Vg. Okay, and this explains uh, something that you see on your data sheet, data sheet, okay, that you see the formula that G, okay, equals change in V, over change in R. If I just grab a data sheet for you. Here. Do, do, do. Just grabbing, quickly grabbing a data sheet for you. There you go. So grabbing a data sheet, this formula, do, 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 gravitational fields, that G is change in V over change in R. And remember potential is of course negative. Okay, I'm just proving where it comes from here. So what I've done here is I've taken the gravitational field strength versus the distance from the centre of the mass graph. And I'm only looking at a very small part of it. And what I've shown to you is that the area underneath the graph is the potential. So you can work out the potential underneath the graph. And if you work out the change in potential... you can work out the change in energy moving one thing from one position here to the other. Okay, so if you could work out the area between these two points here, you could work out the change in potential, and then you could work out the energy by timesing it by the mass. Now, another graph that's important is a potential radius graph. And this is what one looks like here. Now, this is potential in megajoules per kilogram. And as you can see, it stops dead. And this is because, as it, again, it stops at the surface of the object and the reason being is we can't use the for the newton's law of gravitation etc those kind of rules of the inverse square law etc are, are before the surface of the object and that is because g is not constant so again i'm only looking at this here and what i can actually do from this is i could work out the change in potential between two points so if I had an object that was going from 10 to the 6 metres away to 20 to the 6, 20 times 10 to the 6 metres away, I could work out the energy it took me to do that. So if I was going to move from here to here, so I'll call this A and B. So I'm moving a 15 kilogram object from A to B. I could use this graph to work out my change in potential. I'm going to be using the formula I showed you a minute ago, that the change in potential is the change in energy over the mass. So if I'm going from A to B, the potential at A is minus 40 megajoules per kilo, and the potential at B is minus 20 megajoules per kilo. So my in total, my change in energy is going to be plus 20 times 10 to the 6 equals my energy over my mass, which is 15. 
So my energy equals 20 times 10 to the 6 times by 15. Which is 300 times 10 to the 6 joules. So if I was moving something from this position to this position, I could read the graph, get the potential at each point, work out the change in potential, and work out how much energy I would need to move it from that position to that position. Okay, so this graph is important <coughs> because you may get it to read. Please make sure you read the axes. Okay, there's a one from R. Okay, and then use this formula here to work out the energy change. So that is gravitational graphs and the importance of the area under this one here and how it relates to a potential graph here. That is gravitational graphs.